Good morning, church. School starts tomorrow. If you are a teacher or administrator or bus driver or a person that um, has to do with school starting, stand on up. We want to appreciate you. Any, any school teachers, bus drivers, administrators, janitors, people working? All right, if you're a student going back to school tomorrow, if you're a student, well, stay up, teachers, stay up. Bus drivers, stay up all, anybody else? If you are affected by the rhythm of a five-day school, stand up. Okay, well, let's bless them all with our love and our reach out. Just reach out toward them and bless them. We start the school year. Hey, um, if you want to be a part of this school year, we have added another position here at the church. In addition to bus driver, which is a big old yellow thing that takes a special license, we have added van driver. We need some van drivers who'll just drive a van to drop off or pick up kids. Now, you don't need a special license. You just need a special attitude. <laughs> you need an attitude of gratitude that you're with those small children who won't be perfect. You know why they won't be perfect? Because they're small children. Well, they're humans. Yeah, they're, they're humans in general. Well, we're starting a new school year, and God bless us all as we do that. Um, going to talk about consequences today and wisdom. Last week, we talked about wisdom is not stealing your joy when adversity happens. When adversity occurs, how can we have the wisdom that it not steal our joy, our happiness? Now, we continue with wisdom today, and here the word comes up in Scripture, clever, a different way to talk about wisdom. This word, uh, clever, in Hebrew, uh, let's go ahead and pull up the Scripture. The word in Proverbs 22, clever, uh, it, it could be in a negative sense, conniving, or in a positive sense, preparing or thinking about all the consequences. Thinking about all the consequences. So those who are wise, who are clever, who think about all the consequences, see the problem coming. The word danger there means the problem. See the problem coming, and the word hide there actually means to turn another way or to go down or to cover yourself up. In other words, the wise see it coming. But the simple, and that word, I want to be careful. I always want to be careful with, with um, being inappropriate. But the word, the word simple, they use that because a lot of people want to kind of clean the Bible up. The word is actually literally seducible. But the seducible go on and suffer from it. Now, we don't have to put a sexual connotation on that word because the word means able to be talked into by yourself or others. Isn't that an interesting Hebrew word? You're able to talk yourself into it or you're able to let others talk you into something you know is going to cause a problem. And so Scripture says, not just here, but many times in Proverbs and many times throughout the 66 books of Scripture, talks about wisdom is seeing all the consequences possible and moving or hiding or taking a different path because you have seen what's coming. Seneca, uh, the great uh, philosopher at the same time as the life of Jesus, Seneca said, um, the wise are not surprised for they have thought through all the consequences of their actions. Isn't that an interesting thought? The wise are not surprised because they have thought through. We teach staff here to have what we call interdependence, to think of the ripple, you throw a rock in the pond, think of the ripple of all the effects of the action you're going to do. And the simple think that this action gets that consequence. When in essence, any action doesn't just have the intended consequence you intend, it's got far-reaching consequences all the way around. Like a ripple in a pond, it doesn't just do one thing, it touches everything it's connected to. So if we want to follow Christ and if we want to deal with what 
the Judeo-Christian wisdom has been for thousands of years, we think through our actions. There's a very boring word for this, prudent. Isn't that a boring word? But it's a Christian word. It's a powerful word. It actually comes from a Hebrew base for that word, clever. The problem, the problem isn't just that we should do that. The problem is it's not possible to think of all the consequences. It is not, you as a human, you think through all the consequences, but it's hard to think about all the consequences. In fact, if we stopped and thought about all the consequences, we would be paralyzed. I want to quote um, a writing on that. Same author, Norman Cousins, wisdom consists of the anticipation of consequences, all right? We know that, we get that, everybody understand that? Wisdom consists of the anticipation of consequences, but here's the same writer. But death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies inside us while we live. We can be so paralyzed by fear of consequences, so paralyzed by what's happened to us, by the scars and wounds we already have, that when we see all the possibilities of what might happen, we die while we live. We die before we die. We're paralyzed. Um, uh, one psychologist I knew, a professor of mine in seminary, seminary, Robert Kerrigan, defined this as hysteria. When all that could happen gets a wall in front of you and you build this wall of everything that could possibly happen, you literally build a wall toward moving forward. Because if you consider all the consequences, it's pretty scary. Take any medicine. <laughs> Stop and read what might happen to you. This morning I made the mistake of turning on the 24-hour news cycle. I make that mistake often. And my beloved Roundup that I use all of, it's my favorite thing, mow it or kill it. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very easy method of yard work. You know, you either mow it flat or you kill it dead and there's not, nothing really else except those two things. And I'm hearing now that I can't use Roundup because of the consequences that it may cause cancer. Now, I could use Roundup I'm a guy. <laughs> we do risky stuff. I use DDT until I ran out of it. <laughs> That's right. I used all those urethane and urethane and all those thane things until I ran out of them. Um, shoot, my grandfather poured kerosene on anthills and then lit them up. <laughs> Boof until <laughs> we, we rented trailers to, to tourists. It was one of the things my grandparents did on their property. <laughs> he didn't realize he poured this whole five gallon thing. It just kept going, bliggy, 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 bliggy. He emptied the whole five gallons. <laughs> Boof. <laughs> didn't realize. Ant Hills Run. Did y'all know Ant Hills Run? <laughs> Came up under one of the trailers over there. Boof. <laughs> I was standing there as a young boy. Uh, it ended up being a study in marriage because my grandmother came out. and I watched them deal with the consequences of him not thinking through the actions of his kerosene on an anthill, you know. Well, should have seen it over there. And that was his point. His point was, how could I have foreseen it coming up 
under the trailer. She said, you poured five gallons of kerosene in the ground and lit it. <laughs> so the problem of the wise should see it coming is that there is a near infinite amount of consequences and things that could happen. And so the problem, the first problem, is can we? Can we really see all the consequences of our actions happen? But there is, my friend, a second problem. Mike Silvernail and I were just talking about this in the back. When we know the consequences of our actions and we actually see the harm that this would do, there is a human tendency to follow this scripture. Is the scripture able to be popped back up there? To follow this scripture, the clever see danger and hide, but the simple go on. The second problem, my friend, isn't that we don't see it all. The second problem with wisdom is we see it and go on. We are seducible. We can talk ourselves into it or somebody else can talk us into it. Or we want to show off or we want to, or we want to um, impress our friends. Um, do you know the four last words of a redneck like me? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Hey, honey, watch that. <laughs> now, if we were prudent, if we were careful, if we were wise, we would stop and we would think of the consequences that could happen. But my friends, there's a third issue with scriptural wisdom. The first problem is you can't see it all coming, but the second problem is even when you see it, the simple go on. But the third problem is most consequence, um, uh, there's, a, there's a piece of wisdom literature that talks about consequences are like grains of sand or like drops of water in the ocean. And they sneak up on you What's the consequence of eating too much one time? Nothing, really. Eating too much, the calories, all you could possibly eat. You could stuff yourself like a horse gone bad once. And if you woke up, it wouldn't really affect your weight or your life or your health or your future. But that's not the point. The consequences of Grains of sand, drops of water. If I just eat too much this one time, there aren't really consequences for that. Or if I drink too much and make a fool of myself this one time, there aren't really a lot of consequences for that. Or if I spend too much this one time, but listen to it being like grains of sand, like drops of water, you fill an ocean. And after a while, the grain of sand, the drop of water of spending too much this time, and then this time, and then this time, and then this time, and then this time, or eating too much this time, then this time, then this time, or drinking too much this time, this time, this time, becomes a way of life. The danger of the consequences like drops of water, like grains of sand, is that it moves from something you decide to do to a way of life. That's why the psalmist says, show me your ways. Show me your ways. That's why the scripture says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, because it isn't the single drop consequences that drop our lives down. The eating too much once, the saying an insensitive thing once, the not caring about your spouse once, the being selfish 
wants. These things don't destroy a marriage. These things don't destroy a career. These things don't destroy a life. But drop after drop after drop, it's hard to say, it's hard to confess, I've gone a different way. It's so hard to confess, it isn't this one time. It isn't just this one meal. It isn't just this one office flirtation. I'm following a different path. That kind of confession leads to redemption. Because If you confess, well, this was just this little drop, this was just this little grain of sand, this was just this little office flirtation, this was just this little extra meal, this was just this late night snack, this was just this drinking a little too much, this one time. You can so easily talk yourself, seduce yourself into saying you're not following another path when in actuality you are. Who will deliver us, the scripture says, from this body of death? Because grain of sand by grain of sand, drop of water by drop of water, we're following a different way. And we are not wise any longer, and the life that we want is not the life we're headed toward. And we live in an insanity inside of our own soul because we're walking toward, drip by drip, grain by grain, a life we don't want, that shames us, that embarrasses us, that frustrates us, saddens us. And yet we add another grain of sand. Yet we add another drop of water. Yet we add another incident of flirtation or overeating or overspending. I'm not asking you to be a prude, but the word prudent, another word for that word clever, calls us to change our ways. The psalmist says, show me your ways. Because a way that you're following is different than a decision for a moment. I can talk myself into saying this won't hurt anything, and this won't hurt anything, and this won't hurt anything. Just go on a cruise. I've never been on a cruise. Yeah, but I've heard people talk. I've heard people talk about foundering around where their belly don't fit their suit after about three days. And it's three days of, well, this won't hurt anything. Three days of, well, I'm on vacation. Three days of, you know what, I deserve this. Three days of, you know, I can exercise later. My friends, the flirtation of the moment, the temptation of the moment, can easily be talked through unless you are committed to a way of life. And there you need a spiritual power beyond your own. For this kind of wisdom, for this kind of wisdom, you commit to confession. Because confession leads to repentance, and repentance turns you from one way to another. I don't want to be on that way. I want to follow another way. I want to be faithful, faithful to my wife, faithful to my body, faithful to my bank account, faithful in essence to my God, faithful to my creator, faithful to my savior. The decision isn't for a moment. The decision is for a life. The decision isn't for that, it's for that. In the end, our consequences define who we are and the wisdom of scripture becomes a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. I'm gonna pray for you that you step out of seducible, you step out of convincible, that you confess before the Lord that there is an aspect of your life not going where you want your life to be. And you will lay it before God and say, show me your ways in all your truth. I'm gonna pray for you now. Through all my days, Lord, through all my days, show me your truth. Show me your ways. So that a single decision is not convincible. I confess before you that I have fallen short of your glory. And I commit an aspect of my life to you. I give it to you, Lord, that I may be faithful in all things to you. Lord, hear And now in the holiness of your sanctuary, I ask for the wisdom to commit to a way of life. For my life has become uncontrollable. It has become insane. I drop by drop, grain by grain, walk away from the path of faithfulness to you, my Savior. Let souls in this very room recommit their lives to Jesus Christ. Let souls in this very room confess and turn and walk a different path today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.